Hello dear students, today we are going to read the story The Summer of the Beautiful White Horse. The story was written by William Saroyan. William Saroyan he was an Armenian and American novelist, playwright and short story writer. He won the Pulitzer Prize and also won the Academy Award for the best story for the film Human Comedy. In this story, The Summer of the Beautiful White Horse, William Saroyan talks about his experience with a horse. The summer here, it means it's the story of the summer and it is about a beautiful white horse which was the dream of William Saroyan and perhaps his dream was fulfilled and he narrates this entire incident. So here William Saroyan, he talks about uh, one day there in the good old days. These good old days refer to when he was very small, when he was only nine years old. And the world was filled with a lot of grandeur. See over here, imaginable kind of magnificence. Magnificence means something which is a lot of grandeur, which is uh, very uh, brilliant. So here that world of a child had a lot of imagination he had a lot of dreams and that is why he says that the world was filled with imaginable kind of magnificence which he kept on dreaming of good things and life was a delightful and mysterious dream when you're very young you do not know that what will happen in life or what are many of the realities of life so life was just like a dream which was filled with a lot of good things and a lot of imaginary things and it was it is a story of that time when he used to dream a lot and when he used to imagine many things many things used to be really very great for him so he tells that his cousin murad who was considered crazy by everybody he came to his house at four in the morning and woke him up by tapping on the window room so now we know that this is a story the one character we can point out is murad and aram he says aram is the name of our writer so he called on this boy murad his cousin murad called the narrator aram and he said he screamed out his name. I jumped out of the bed and looked out of the window. So that time the uh, boy Aram was sleeping. So he simply jumped off and he saw something which he could not believe. He tells that it wasn't morning yet, but it was summer. And that is why the daybreak was very early in the morning. And there was enough light and he understood that what he was observing that he was not dreaming that was something which is the reality and he tells that my cousin murad he was sitting on a beautiful white horse he just struck his head out of the window he rubbed his eyes and he said in armenian it is a horse so you can see over here armenian here it refers to the language the language of the people of armenia armenia is a nation and the former soviet republic and it is in the mountainous caucasus region between asia and europe so this refers to a particular tribe and the language they were speaking is armenian so in armenian this boy murad he screamed that it is a horse and you are not dreaming and if you want to ride then you have to be very quick you can see this beautiful horse and the boy peeping out of the window then uh, Aram says that he knew that his cousin Murad enjoyed being alive. He was such a soul that who really enjoyed living, who enjoyed each and every moment, enjoyed being alive more than anyone else who have fallen into the world by mistake. But this was something that he could not believe, that Murad riding on a horse early in the morning, this was beyond his belief, beyond his expectations. And he tells that in the first place, my earliest memory had been memories of horses. So he tells that why he wasn't able to believe that there is a horse and Murad is sitting on the horse. That he tells that first I had always a great longing for horses and he had always longed to ride. Long means really desire, a long cherished desire. So he had a desire to ride. So that is why this was the wonderful part. And the second reason that he was not able to 
believe that there was a horse outside is that they were poor and this is the part which would not permit him that what he saw because they were so poor they did not have money and not only they the entire tribe the armenian tribe was poverty stricken and he says every branch of the gagolian family here he refers to his family the particular armenian tribe they were living in amazing and comical pow- poverty okay and nobody would understand that whether they got enough money to have enough food and it was a wonder that not even the old people in the family had enough money now so that they can buy food and he tells that we had been famous it means their tribe had been famous for honesty for something like the 11th centuries and that time uh, they thought that they were really very wealthy means they were well off and but still they were very famous for their honesty and he tells that in their tribe they were proud first that they belonged to that tribe and they were very honest and they also believed in right and wrong they never did the bad things okay and he tells that none of uh, none of the person in a tribe they would take advantage of anyone and stealing is something which will never happen in this particular tribe so this is the reason why he was not able to believe that murad is sitting on a horse because the first thing was that he was always dreaming about horses and this was something he could not imagine and the second thing was that from where did he get the horse because he was so poor and he could not have stolen because they were so honest and so it was just a surprise for him so it was a big desire it was a dream of murad to ride the horse and that is why he tells that consequently he could see the horse so magnificent magnificent means very grand in appearance or uh, very elegant so he could see the horse very magnificent he could even smell the horse he loved the horses so much that he could even feel the smell and it was so lovely he tells and even though he could hear the horse breathe thing and it was really very exciting for him because this has been his long cherished desire but he couldn't believe it this uh, whole scene he couldn't believe that the horse had nothing to do with his cousin murad or me or with any other members of the family asleep or awake he could not believe that this horse this beautiful white horse belongs to any member of the family and he knew that his cousin murad couldn't have bought the horse because they were all were very poor so there's no chance of buying the horse and if he did not buy the horse he must have stolen stolen it because none of the family members have this horse so perhaps he has stolen it from somewhere and aram refused to believe that he had stolen because the gargolanian family was very famous for its honesty was very famous for truthfulness so he did not believe that a member of his tribe had stolen a horse he could never believe that any member of gargolanian family would be a thief so he stared at the cousin and he stared at the horse with surprise and there was a stillness in the whole environment everything was quiet and he was also filled with a lot of excitement and this excitement it delighted me it made him happy and on the other hand it also scared him it scared him because this was something which was very exciting and perhaps he would uh, be scolded for it for doing something some adventurous experience like that so he was truly very excited so aram was quite delighted that he was observing this horse and he was uh, at the same moment he was very scared because he thought that the horse was stolen so he directly asked the question to murad that murad where did you steal this horse and murad just ignored his question and he instructed him to leap out of the window leap here means jump so he told him to jump out of the window if you want to ride and this perhaps made it sure that he had stolen the horse and aram understood that there was no question uh, of the things going otherwise and he understood that his brother had come to invite him to ride or not ap- according to his choice and then he somehow consoled himself that uh, stealing a horse 
for a ride was not the same thing as stealing so when we are going to do something wrong somehow we console ourselves that we are uh, we are doing this only because we don't have any option or we are doing this because this is something which is right for the whole world or for us so that's why he tells that maybe this is not stealing because if we are uh, stealing something like money then maybe it is called stealing but stealing a horse just for a ride is not stealing at all and in this case if you are so crazy about horses if you are so crazy about horses the way his cousin and himself arad uh, aram were it was really not at all stealing and it would not become stealing until and unless they offered to sell the horse which of course they thought they are never going to do because they loved horses and they will always keep on riding the horses till it is uh, till they have the horse so then he quickly made up his mind and he told he just uh, told that let me put on some clothes and uh, Murad was also in a hurry so he told all right but hurry and then he quickly jumped into his clothes because his long cherished dream was going to be true and then he jumped out on the yard from the window and he leaped onto the horse that is he jumped into the horse just behind his cousin Murad so Aram jumped onto the horse and he went with his cousin Murad for a horse ride and then he describes about his uh, place where he lives and here aram tells that that year they lived at the edge of the town on walnut avenue so why that year over here because this particular armenian tribe the gargolinian tribe they were basically nomads and so that is why on that particular year they lived in this place walnut avenue and then he describes that behind our house was the country vineyards orchards and irrigation ditches vineyards are the uh, grapes where grapes are grown particularly for the preparation of wine and orchards are where trees fruits and nuts are grown these irrigation ditches are the shallow places where water is stored for watering the plants for watering the entire garden or orchard and the country roads country here refers to village roads so that year they lived on walnut avenue and uh, the all the place was filled with a lot of cultivation vineyards orchards and there were many ditches which were filled with water and in less than 3 minutes they went on olive avenue because they were riding on the horse so it took very less time and in less than 3 minutes they went to olive avenue and then the horse it began to trot it it began to make the specific sound and the air was new early in the morning it was very lovely to breathe and the feeling that the horse was running was really wonderful and then his cousin murad who was considered as one of the craziest members he began to sing and his singing it appeared like roaring Now here the narrator describes his view that each and every family has a crazy streak in it somewhere it means there are a few people who appear to be a bit crazy a bit different from each and every one and he tells that his cousin murad was also one of them he was the natural descendant of the crazy streak in our tribe so in their tribe it was uh, uh, very strange that some people they were considered to be crazy or very peculiar because of the behavior because of what they did and there was something in murad which made him show the same nature he was also a bit crazy before him he tells that in each and every generation there is a person and before him it was the uncle khushro he was an enormous man it means a huge man with a powerful head of black hair so he was quite powerful he was quite big and enormous and he had black hair and he also had the largest mustache in the entire san jenko valley that is the valley where they lived so they had Uh, he had the largest mustache and he was so furious he was very furious he used to get angry very fast he had a high temper he was irritable he used to get irritated with small things and he was very impatient and he never allowed everyone anyone to talk he stopped anyone from talking by roaring or by screaming loudly and what he used to scream it was his line it is no harm pay no attention to it and then the writer 
says no matter whatever anybody happened to be talking but it was always that he spoke this line what was his line it is no harm pay no attention to it now he narrates an incident that once his own son arak he had run eight blocks he had run run a large distance and he had come to the barber shop where his father he was having his mustache trim you might remember that he was having the largest mustache so he was getting it trimmed and he came running to tell him that his house was on fire now this man khushro he sat up in chair and he shouted what did he shout it's no harm pay no attention to it the barber was very astonished he says but the boy has come to say that your house is on fire but khushro again screamed he again roared and said that enough it's no harm i said so this was the crazy streak that he describes that the crazy streak in his family in the uh, last generation is uncle khushro and in this generation of the young boys murad is the crazy streak So yeah, Aram tells that his cousin Murad was the natural descendant of this man. Descendant is successor. He was a successor of this man called Khushro, who had this crazy streak, who used to be uh, very impatient and he used to scream out loudly. So he tells that although Murad's father was not Khushro, was not Uncle Khushro, it was Zorab, and he was a very practical man. But that is how it is there in their tribe. That is the thing which is. common in their tribe that a man could be the father of his son's flesh but that does not mean that he also has his spirit it, it that does not mean that the spirits are same and this distribution of different kinds of spirit in a, in their tribe was from beginning capricious capricious here means unpredictable it was quite unpredictable and it was very drifting this used to change this used to drift okay so that is why although uncle khushro was not the father of murad but still he was considered as his father of spirit because they had the same type of uh, attitude and then he tells that they rode and his cousin murad he started singing his cousin murad was also considered as the crazy streak and he started singing and he tells that for all everyone knows that we were in the old country okay they were still in the old country they were riding the horse and old country here means old village and which he tells that this is the old country from which he, uh, some of the neighbors tell that they belong then they were running and uh, they were there on the horse and they let the horse uh, run as long as it felt like running and at last his cousin murad said he commanded that get down of the horse because i want to ride alone okay and then very quickly aram question that will you also let me ride alone and then murad says that this is not my decision but that will be the decision of the horse okay and then aram very confidently because he has always dreamt of horses so he very confidently tells that the horse will surely let me ride okay and murad here he tells that we shall see do not forget that i have a way with the horse he tells that he has a very peculiar way with the horse he knows how to handle the horse and that is why the horses will only listen to him murad and then aram says well if you have a way any way you have with the horse i also have my way okay and then murad here tells that for the sake of your safety let us hope and then he commands him again to get down so aram gets down and he gives a warning that you have to remember that you have got to let me to try to ride alone and then when as soon as aram got down his cousin murad he kicked on to his heels and he screamed he shouted was he run so this was his uh, pet dialogue that he used with the horse what did he tell was he run and the horse very nicely it stood on its hind legs that is behind legs he snorted make that peculiar sound from his nose and he burst into a fury of speed fury of speed here means he started uh, running very fast and this was something which was was very lovely this was a lovely thing that he had ever seen aram had ever seen my cousin murad he raced horses he raced the horse along a field of dry grass so there was a field of dry grass where he took the horse and then to an irrigation ditch that uh, ditch i 
told that the shallow water uh, ditch where the water is stored for giving water to the plants so he took the horse to the irrigation ditch he crossed the ditch and on the horse and on five after five minutes he returned back wet and he was dripping because of the water of the irrigation ditch and now as the sun was coming up aram told now it's my turn to ride and then the cousin murad got off the horse and he commanded him to ride and very quickly aram he leaped back on uh, the horse and he for a moment he knew the most awful imaginable fear and what was his fear that the horse did not move see this line over here it tells that aram had always dreamt about horses he had always dreamt about riding the hor horses in the fullest of speed and now when actually he has the opportunity to ride on the horse what was his fear that the horse did not move at all the horse stood there it did not move so this was something he had never imagined his cousin told to kick into his muscles what are you waiting for he screamed and he also warned him that see we have to take it back before everybody in the world is up and then aram kicked the horse into the muscles and then again the horse reared and snorted and then it started to run but instead of running across the field as whatever his brother had done he just wanted to follow it but that did not happen because instead of running across the field to the irrigation ditch the horse ran down the road to the wine yard of dikran haliban where it began to leap over wine so this there was a farmer on dikran hali Taliban and his vineyard was there his cultivation of grapes was there and uh, this horse it started jumping over the vines and it started jumping over the vines it leapt it leaped over the seven vines and after that aram he felt down but the horse continued running so as expected by uh, aram the horse did not go to the irrigation ditch but he started leaping over the uh, vines of dikran haliban and then his cousin uh, murad he also came running down the road and he screamed that see i'm not worried for you aram but i have to get that horse because and then he tells he gives him instruction you go this way and i will go that way and if you get that horse you have to be kind i'll be near and then he continued down the road and his cousin murad went across the field towards the irrigation ditch and it took him almost half an hour to bring the horse back bring the horse back so that he could take it and then he when he got the horse he instructed him that okay now jump on the horse because the whole world is awake everyone is awake as they had stolen the horse that hidden from everyone that they are riding on the horse so they had to hide this fact from everyone and then they were scared and aram asked now what we will do well he said we will either take him back or we will hide him until tomorrow morning and the way he was speaking he was not appearing worried and somehow aram knew that he will surely hide him and he does not have any plans to take the horse back not for a while means not for some time at any cost and then he quickly asked him okay where will we hide him and then uh, murad says that i know a place and now he asks the question to murad that how long ago did you steal this horse okay and when he was asking this question it dawned on me it means dawned on me means he got the realization that his cousin had been taken these early morning rides for some time somewhere he knew it was there in his mind that he was doing something in the morning and now he realized what his brother was doing and this morning he had come to aram only because he knew how much aram longed to ride and that is why he had given him this opportunity to ride the horse and to this question that how long ago did this did you steal the horse uh, murad was very angry and what does he say who said anything about stealing the horse anyhow 
I said, how long ago did you begin riding every morning? So, he quickly changed his question. Okay, now tell me that how long ago did you begin riding? Because you have been riding every morning. And then to which uh, Murad answers that not until this morning he said. And Aram quickly questions, are you telling the truth that only this morning you caught the horse? And to which he replies, of course not. But if we are found out, if anyone comes to know, then that is the thing you are supposed to say. Because I don't want both of us to lie. I don't want both of us to say two different things. So, you, what, whosoever asks you, you have to tell the same answer that we started riding only this morning. Okay. And to which Aram very happily agreed. And then he took the horse, he walked the horse, means he was uh, taking the horse uh, quietly to a barn. Barn is a, a place where cattle are kept. Okay, so he took him to the barn of a deserted vineyard, which at one time had been the pride of a farmer named Fatwajin. So now in this vineyard, no one was there, uh, there was no cultivation done. And before this belonged to a farmer named Fatwajin. And there were also some oats and dry alpha alpha in the barn. Oats, these are the things that horses eat. Oats uh, is the uh, roughage form that we eat. And dry alpha alpha is a seaweed that is that was eaten by horses in their place. So that was kept in the barn and the horse fed on that. We began walking home. Now they had hidden the horse and they started moving on. And it wasn't easy, he says. Now, Murad tries to uh, narrate his experience that, see, it wasn't easy to get the horse to behave so nicely. When I got the horse, it wanted to run wild, as I have told you. But I have a specific way with the horse. I know how to treat with the horse. And I now, I can get it to do what whatever I want, I want, I can do, make the horse to do that because horses understand me. And Aram was very astonished. How does his brother does that? And he asked this question, how do we do it? And he simply answered that I have an understanding with the horse. And Aram and ask this question, yes, you have an understanding, but what is that sort of understanding? To which he replies, that a very simple and honest one. And then Aram is sad and he wishes that, yes, I hope I also knew how to understand or how to reach an understanding with that of the horse. Murad replies, Murad was uh, elder, so he replies that, see, you are still a small boy and when you will be 13 years old, then you will surely know how to make the horse uh, do whatever you want. And that day, because they had uh, uh, spent a lot of time riding on the horse, so they went home and Aram ate a hearty breakfast. So, as expected by uh, Aram, the horse did not go to the irrigation ditch, but he started leaping over the uh, vines of Dikran Haliban. And then his cousin uh, Murad, he also came running down the road and he screamed that, see, I'm not worried for you, Aram, but I have to get that horse. because. And then he tells, he gives him instruction, you go this way and I will go that way. And if you get that horse, you have to be kind, I'll be near. And then he continued down the road and his cousin Murad went across the field towards the irrigation ditch. And it took him almost half an hour to bring the horse back. Bring the horse back so that he could take it. And then he, when he got the horse, he instructed him that, okay, now jump on the horse because the whole world is awake. Everyone is awake as they had stolen the horse, they had hidden from everyone that they are riding on the horse. So they had to hide this fact from everyone. And then they were scared and Aram asked, now what we will do? Well, he said, we will either take him back or we will hide him until tomorrow morning. And the way he was speaking, he was not appearing worried. And somehow Aram knew that he will surely hide him and he does not have any plans to take the horse back. Not for a while means not for some time at any cost. And then he quickly asked him, okay, where will we hide him? And then uh, Murad says that I know a place. And now he asks the question to Murad that how long ago did you steal this horse? 
okay and when he was asking this question it dawned on me it means dawned on me means he got the realization that his cousin had been taken these early morning rides for some time somewhere he knew it was there in his mind that he was doing something in the morning and now he realized what his brother was doing and this morning he had come to aram only because he knew how much aram longed to ride and that is why he had given him this opportunity to ride the horse and to this question that how long ago did this did you steal the horse uh, murad was very angry and what does he say who said anything about stealing the horse anyhow i said how long ago did you begin riding every morning so he quickly changes question okay now tell me that how long ago did you begin riding because you have been riding every morning and then to which uh, murad answers that not until this morning he said and aram quickly questions are you telling the truth that only this morning you caught the horse and to which he replies of course not but if we are found out if anyone comes to know then that is the thing you are supposed to say because i don't want both of us to lie i don't want both of us to say two different things so you what whosoever ask you you have to tell the same answer that we started riding only this morning okay and to which aram very happily agreed and then he took the horse he walked the horse means he was uh, taking the horse uh, quietly to a barn barn is a, a place where cattle are kept okay so he took him to the barn of a deserted vineyard which at one time had been the pride of a farmer named fatwajin so now in this vineyard no one was there uh, there was no cultivation done and before this belonged to a farmer named fatwajin and there were also some oats and dry alfalfa in the barn oats these are the things that horses eat oats uh, is the uh, roughage form that we eat and dry alfalfa is a sea weed that is that was eaten by horses in their place so that was kept in the barn and the horse fed on that we began walking home now they had hidden the horse and they started moving on and it wasn't easy he says now murad tries to uh, narrate his experience that see it wasn't easy to get the horse to behave so nicely when i got the horse it wanted to run wild as i have told you but i have a specific way with the horse i know how to treat with the horse and i now i can get it to do what whatever i want i want i can do make the horse to do that because horses understand me and aram was very astonished how does his brother does that and he asked this question how do you do it and he simply answered that i have an understanding with the horse and aram and ask this question yes you have an understanding but what is that sort of understanding to which he replies that a very simple and honest one and then aram is sad and he wishes that yes i hope i also knew how to understand or how to reach an understanding with that of the horse murad replies murad was uh, elder so he replies that see you are still a small boy and when you will be 13 years old then you will surely know how to make the horse uh, do whatever you want and that day because they had uh, uh, spent a lot of time riding on the horse so they went home and aram ate a hearty breakfast Now Aram here describes that that same afternoon his uncle Khushro who was considered to be crazy in his family he came to his house and he came for coffee and cigarettes he sat in the parlor he was sipping and he was smoking and he was also remembering the old country the previous place where they used to live and then at the same time another visitor arrived he was a farmer and his name was John Bryo so he this john briar was an assyrian he was from assyria who out of loneliness he had learned to speak the language of the place that is armenian and aram's mother he brought the lonely visitor coffee and tobacco and just like uncle khushro he also rolled a cigarette and sipped and smoked and then he was sitting quietly and he sighed sadly saying that my white horse which was stolen last month is still gone 
one i cannot understand it so now from these lines we get to know that this white horse about whom it's being spoken in the chapter this belongs to the farmer named john brio now here uncle khushro was also present and uncle khushro he became very irritated and he started shouting because he was a crazy member of the family and what did he shout it's no harm what is the loss of the horse we all have lost our homeland so what is this crying over such a horse and then john brio again says very sadly that that may be all right for you because you are a city dweller you live in a city okay and uh, to say john brio said but what of my sare what will happen to my cart without a horse what good is a sare without a horse there is no use of a cart without a horse and then uncle khushro says that just pay no attention to it and then again he uh, tells about his misery that he had to walk 10 miles to get over aram's place john brio he simply just said whatever problems he had without his white horse and then uncle khushro again screamed you have legs okay you have legs you can simply walk and then again he exclaims that see my left leg pains this poor farmer john brio he tells that my left leg pains and uncle khushro again wrote because this was his habit he exclaimed that pay no attention to it and here also the john brio did not end elaborating his misery he tells that that horse it had cost me 60 dollars i spit on money by this uncle khushro road he again started screaming that i spit on money and he simply got up and he walked out of the house slamming the screen door his mother he explained he given exp- he gave an explanation uh for the reaction of uncle khushro because uncle khushro was too loud and he was screaming at the visitor so his mother tried to uh, uh, maintain everything he uh, she tried to make the poor farmer john brio very calm and she says that see he has a gentle heart simply that because he's so homesick he rem- he keeps remembering about his home and he is such a huge man and that is why maybe his expression of anger is also too much okay and the farmer went away and with this new piece of information that this horse belongs to john brio aram ran over to his cousin murad's house murad he was sitting under a peach tree and he was trying to repair the hurt wings of a young robin so robin is a small bird so uh, this boy murad he was uh, very caring for the animals and the bird so he was just trying to repair the hurt wings of the robin which was not able to fly and while doing so he was also talking to the bird and he simply told what it is why have you come running and he says the farmer john brio he visited a how our house and he wants his horse you have had his horse for a month but i want you to promise that not to take it back until i learn to ride so here we know that aram was very particular about riding he really loved horses and so he says that see i know that you have taken a horse for a month but you're not going to return it until and unless i learn to ride aram here he exclaimed that see it will take you a year to learn to ride and uh, to which uh, aram quickly says that yes we can keep the horse for a year my cousin murad he leaped to his feet he jumped on his feet and he exclaimed what he roared road means he screamed what are you inviting a member of the gargolanian family to steal the horse must go back to its true owner so this was a proclamation made by this uh, boy murad that you are you should not invite a member of this gargolanian family to steal and the horse will go back to its owner then aram quickly questions when in 6 months at the latest so he decided that uh, for 6 months the horse will be with them and he was repairing this bird his hurt uh, wings of the bird robin and he threw the bird into the air the bird tried hard it almost fell twice but it at last flew away high and straight so this was how murad used to handle the animals or birds early every morning for 
the next two weeks his cousin murad and himself aram they took the horse out of the barn of the deserted vineyard where they had hidden the horse and uh, uh, they always took the horse and they kept on riding the horse every morning and when it was aram's turn to ride alone always the horse used to shame sh show the same action he used to leap over the grape vines and small trees it threw aram and it ran away so till now aram was not very friendly with the horse nevertheless aram always hoped that in time he will surely learn to ride the way his cousin murad did and one morning when they were going to fatwajian's deserted vineyard where they had hidden this horse they ran into the farmer john brio ran into the farmer john brio here means they accidentally they met the farmer john brio who was going to the town and then they both were scared and murad says that let me do the talking i have a way with the farmers means i know how to deal the farmer so i will talk and then he says that good morning john brio my cousin murad said to the farmer the farmer he looked at this horse very eagerly because it was the same white horse that was stolen and he also greeted good morning son of my friends what is the name of the horse and his cousin murad in armenian he said my heart so he had named the horse my heart in the armenian language John Brier commented, "It's such a lovely name for a lovely horse, and I could swear, okay, I could take an oath that this horse was the same horse that was stolen from me many years ago." And then he wants to examine this horse. He uh, he is asking the two boys that may I look into his mouth, and Murad says that yes, of course. And the farmer looked into the mouth of the house, mouth of the horse, tooth for tooth. He says it means that. it is exactly the same the horse which was lost his horse which was lost and this white horse were exactly the same and he tells that i could swear that this is my horse if i did not know your parents because your family is very famous for its honesty and this is very well known to me so yes i can say that this horse is the twin of my horse but i can't confirm i can't say that this is the same horse that i was having he says that a suspicious man would believe his eyes instead of his heart and then he says that good day my young friends and he leaves so he does not question anything he does not ask anything he simply tells that yes this horse is just the same as the horse which i was having but i can't tell i can't blame that you have stolen this horse because i firmly believe about your family values that you do not steal you do not tell truth or lie and that is why he simply goes away and that um, afternoon here uh, the early for uh, following morning here aram tells that we took the horse to john brio's wi vineyard and put it in the barn so these boys perhaps they felt very conscious stricken because the name of the family had come right and so they went and they tied this horse to john brio's vineyard the dogs were also there the dogs followed these newcomers who had uh, perhaps never been to john brio's vineyard and the dogs simply followed them without making a sound the dogs i whispered to my cousin murad i thought they would bark so when you have a stranger coming in a particular locality usually the local dogs they keep on barking but here it was very strange that the dogs were simply staring they were not barking at all when these boys got the uh horse they would at somebody else he said i have a way with the dogs so this is what murad replies that i have a particular way with the dogs and that's why they uh, showed a very friendly behavior my cousin murad he put his arms around the horse he pressed his nose into the horse nose he patted it he loved it and then he went away and so they uh, bid their goodbye to the horse and both the boys they went out and that afternoon john brio he again came to aram's house in his saree that is in his cart and he showed his mother the horse that had been stolen and returned and he says that see i don't know what to think the because the horse has become much stronger he has 
become better tempered nowadays he does not get furious or angry very fast he i can control him very easily i thank god and then the, his uncle khushro uncle khushro was also there in the parlor he again became very irritated and he started shouting quiet man quiet your horse has been returned pay no attention to it so again he displayed his crazy streak and he screamed that see now your horse has been returned but you do not pay any attention to it so i hope you have understood i'll be dealing with the question and answers in the next ppt thank you